Welcome to church once again here at Heart Mountain. This is Heart Mountain Ministries and I am Pastor Rob Fisk. I have another really important one for you. I know I say it all the time, but this the Word of God is so important. But first, let me read you three testimonies. I haven't done this for a long time. There's one that wrote, Thanks, I could feel God so strong. Keep it going, brother. And I don't know whether that was for the worship or the teaching, but thank you. God bless you. The next one, thank you for your awesome anointed sermons. Well, I know that's about the sermons. And the third one, enjoyed so much your brief teaching on prayer. I could listen for hours. It was awesome and real truth. Thank you so much, my sister. That really encourages me. Oh, and I was talking to one of my best friends yesterday on the phone, and he was saying, one thing we really appreciate about your ministry is you don't make things up. <laughs> it made me laugh. Well, we got to teach the Word of God. That's the only thing that's going to change your life. So no, we don't make things up. We plagiarize everything from the Bible. Well, if it's not from the Bible, it's not God. So listen, some of you were quite surprised a few weeks ago when I did the Satan's Big Three, talking about you know the three things that Satan always uses to tempt us, and how it was found in the Old Testament, in the middle of the Old Testament, and in the New Testament, in exactly the same order. Some of you were really surprised. See if you remember. Remember, remember the uh, three of Satan's Big Things are the lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life. Well, today I'm teaching on God's secret of success. It is so important because you can succeed with God in your life. And once again, it's found in the beginning, the middle, and the pretty much the end of the of the Bible, and so I'm going to do. You're going to be really surprised to see how this works. I'm going to do three things today. I'm going to tell you what is the secret of God's success. Number two, I will define success, and number three, I'm going to help you make it work in your life. Yeah, this stuff works. About thirty years ago, I had a man come up to me in church, <laughs> and he said. Everything you touch seems to work. Why? <laughs> and I'm going to tell you exactly the same thing I told him. I gave him the same answer I'm going to give you all today. If you want the same kind of results, you're going to have to do what the Bible says to do. Will you do that? Are you ready? Okay. God's secret of success. Three things. Meditate. See and do. I'll say it again. Meditate, see, and do. Turn to, well, there's actually three verses we're going to cover today. One is in Joshua 1 8, which we're going to go to first if you want to turn to Joshua 1 8. The next one is in Psalm 1, and the third one is in James 1 25. You know, I was going to write a book, <laughs> and I planned the title, The God's Secret of Success. And in the book, I was going to make a little checkbox next to everything that the Word says to do. And when you did it, you could check it off, because that's part of the secret of success, meditate, see, and do. But then I realized I'd have to reprint most of the New Testament, so I might as well just let people just read the New Testament. So when they see something, they believe it, they see it, and they just do it. That's the secret of success. So in uh, Joshua 1.8, in the King James, it says this, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate. See, there's the meditate. Therein, day and night, you know, think about it all the time. And I'll teach you a little bit about med meditation. I almost said medication. Meditation in a moment. I'll read it again. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe, that's the see part, meditate, see, and do, that you mayest observe to do, and there's the do part. Observe to do according to how much? All that is written therein. For then you shall ha make your, your way prosperous, I'll say it again. For then you shall make your way prosperous, and then 
you will have good success. Does the word of God lie? (laughs) Never. And what God spoke to one person applies to all. We can all get in on this. God is no respecter of persons. So what's the book of the law? The Bible. And obviously Joshua only had a few of the scrolls that are leading up. And we have the benefit of having the entire Bible. God breathed in our hands that we can meditate on these things. The word meditate comes from the Old Testament word hagah. It means, I'll put it up here, to moan, (laughs) to growl. And here's one of the important ones. To utter, to muse. Here's the other important one. To mutter, to meditate, devise, or to speak. So listen, I've said it before, but if you take this to heart and really do it, you'll be planting the word deep in your spirit. To meditate literally means to utter and mutter. Read the word of God. Read it slowly. Read it out loud. Out your mouth gate, into your ear gate, deep into your spirit. And the other thing that's really important is you've got to take time We're way too busy in life. Oh, I can't hear from God. Well, God's talking all the time. He's broadcasting. Your receiver isn't turned on. You gotta meditate. You gotta utter, mutter, pray, and just listen. And let it get down deep, and you'll hear what God is speaking to you. Mm -mm 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 -mm. So, the second verse is Psalm 1. I'm gonna read it from the Tyndale Living Bible. I've really been enjoying that version lately. Verses 1 through 3. Oh, the joys of those who do not follow evil men's advice, who do not hang around with sinners, scoffing at the things of God. Hold on, my mouth is dry. But they delight in doing everything God wants them to do. And day and night they are always doing what? Meditating. There's meditate on his laws and thinking about, when you think about the laws, you begin to see <clears throat> pardon me, see ways to follow him more closely, and that's the do part. And what is the advantage of those who obey Psalm 1, verses 1 through 3? Here it is, verse 3. They are like trees along a riverbank, bearing luscious fruit each season without fail. Their leaves shall never wither, and check this out, and all they do shall prosper. Wow. Okay, New Testament. Turn to James 1.25. New King James Version says this. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty, that's, you know, that's obviously the Bible, and continues in it, that's meditate, and is not a forgetful hearer, see, let me stop for a second, being not a forgetful hearer means that you're seeing by meditation, you're seeing what God wants you to do, and you're not forgetting it. Therefore, it's bright in front of your eyes all the time. So here we go. He's not a forgetful hearer. That's the C part. But a doer, and that's the important part, to do. He's a doer of the work. And if, here's the blessing. This one will be blessed in what he does. You see that? Meditate, see, and do all through the Bible. And there are other scriptures that say the same thing, but I only brought these three out to make a point. Um, Let me just point out in Matthew 7, I'm going to put it down here for you. Jesus makes this huge, huge point saying, whoever hears my saying and does them will be like a man who builds his house upon a rock. The storms come, the winds blow, but the house doesn't fall because he does the word of God. So important. Meditate, see, and do. They that don't do the word of God, Jesus went on to say, Matthew 7, 24 through 27, it's like a man who builds his house on the sand. And when the winds and storms come, the house falls, and great is the fall of that house. You don't want that. You want to do what Jesus said. Do. Wait, I love what Linda says. She says, you know, she'll read a scripture and she'll say, okay. Let's do it. <laughs> Man, if I could can and sell that, I'd be a bajillionaire. That's the part of the secret of success. Meditate, see, and do. Now, let me define success for you. I heard a preacher say one time that success was not just money. He defined success as being able to meet any need. <laughs> that's funny, because that's how ministry is spelled. <laughs> ministry is spelled W-O-R-K, and ministry is finding a need and meeting it. Did you know that? That's the true definition of ministry. Now, check it out. Moses, no water, desert, million people, 
praise. God says, strike the rock and water will come out of it. He strikes the rock and so much water comes out. It satisfies a million people with all their uh, sheep and cattle and all their livestock. That's success. <laughs> Meeting the need. Uh, another idea, a, 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 a example. A lady in our church had injured her shoulder one time, and uh, was standing next to Linda in choir, and and she says, "Boy, I really need I need prayer." And Linda says, "I'll do it." Laid hands on her in Jesus' name. The Bible says, "Lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover." Laid hands on her in Jesus' name, and all of a sudden she says, "My shoulder doesn't hurt," and it never came back. That is success. Amen. Meeting every need, whether it's money, whether it's prayer, whether it's a miracle, that is the secret of success. Let's renew our minds to what success really is. Getting people born again, that's success because you'll be in heaven with us forever and ever. Lastly, how to make this work in your life. You plant the seed in your heart, but this is huge. I've been getting a lot of revelation in Mark chapter 4. I recommend you go read that. It's where the sower sows the word, and the disciple says, explain this to us. And Jesus said, if you don't understand this parable, then how will you understand all parables? So it is the parable of parables. Jesus talked about four kinds of soil, which is your heart, okay? You got to start sowing the word in your heart, but you got to make sure you got the right kind of soil. What kind of soil is your heart? Is it, here, let me turn the page here. Is it hard ground? That's the first kind of soil. Is it stony, shallow ground? That's the second kind of soil Jesus talked about. Is it a ground full of weeds? I call this CDL, like a CDL license. In other words, the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, and the lust of other things entering in. Those are weeds, and they choke the word, and there's no fruit. Do you have that kind of ground? Or do you have good ground? Let me talk about good ground. Well, let me let me go back to the hard ground. Hard ground is those that are just hearing the word, don't really care. You know, maybe maybe born again, maybe not, but not making spiritual things a priority. Satan goes pow, takes away the word because it's just sitting on hard ground. Two, the stony and shallow ground. So many Christians are. Mm, I heard two preachers about forty years apart say the same thing about the body of Christ. The first one said most of the body of Christ is carnal, you know, minding the things of the flesh. And one recently said that most of the body of Christ are still infants. They just take the milk of the word. They don't understand the righteousness of God, which is the meat of the word and who they are in Christ. And so that's number two kind of ground, the stony, shallow ground. The word is sown in your heart. You get all excited. That's excellent. But then by Monday or Tuesday, you know, you're just not living it. We've got to take all the stones. You know, I remember being overseas and seeing uh, all these stones that were taken out of the ground and just piled in long, like, fence-like things so they could farm the ground. That's what we need to do is take the stones out of our stony heart. The third kind of ground, and some of you have this, it's, it's decent ground, but... You just haven't minded the mind, minded the store, so to speak. And when you plant a garden, you got to go out there and weed it every few days, or it's just going to be weeds and maybe some fruit, but mostly weeds. You know, so you've got to take the time to get the weeds out of your heart. And and God has done it for me. He's He's helped me to get the weeds, which are CDL cares of this world deceitfulness of other things or deceitfulness of riches and the lust for other things and if you pull those weeds remove the stones and meditate in the word and let it get down deep then you're good soil and you'll bring forth fruit 30 times what was sown 60 times some of you 100 times what was sown then you'll have good success amen meditate see and do so last thing meditating on the word and praying i heard this when i was first born again are the sunshine and the water that the seed needs in order to grow and produce a great harvest i'll say it one more time meditating on the word and praying 
in fellowshipping with God are the sunshine and the water that the seed needs in order to grow and produce a great harvest. I pray you can do this. I pray you begin to set the time aside and put the effort in. These are the last days. You need strength. You need joy. You need peace. Let me pray for you. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for the saints today. I pray that they would hear this word and do what it says. Pull out the stones and pull out the weeds and take the time and meditate. Let the word get down deep because it'll grow. It'll grow on its own. And once it's planted and it's given the water and the sunshine. Thank you, Father, for the great success all of my brothers and sisters, my friends, are going to begin to have because they've heard God's secret of success, success and they're going to do it. I thank you for it. Thank you for the blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Listen, write to me as you begin to get these blessings because the Word of God does work. And you just put confidence. It's called the integrity of the Word. You know, you believe that God said it, He meant it, and it's true. And you align everything else in your life up with the Word of God. No decision is ever made apart from the Word of God. It's so great. And it works. It's the secret of success. And then being a church, and some of you don't have another church, I understand that, and we're feeding the Word of God. If you want to give an offering, just go to our website, it's right here on the page, and go to the, it's either give or donate. I forget which button it is, and then you click on one, it becomes the other. Anyway, it gives you all the details that you would need in order to successfully support the ministry. Thank you ahead of time. Praise God for we're reaching more and more. We have so many more viewers now. We have so many more hits. It's just amazing. And there are people around the world that don't have a Christian church they can go to. And they're coming here. And we love you all around the world. We love you here in the U.S. of A. So until next week, God bless you.